Hello, today's theme is hacking and it's actually going to be particularly about language hacking. Now, before we can get into that, we have to know what hacking is. Many people associate it with some evil person breaking into a bank's computer and stealing account details. Um, but originally, it meant something quite different. It meant something positive. It started in the 1960s in computer science departments in universities in the States. And it meant a really ingenious solution to a difficult problem that would increase productivity quite dramatically. So there would be some thorny mathematical problem or some difficult programming problem that people have been working on for a long time and somebody would go, oh, aha, Eureka, you know, Eureka, and come up with a really clever solution that was very simple and had a big impact. Now, this idea moved out of computer science departments and has now been applied in many areas. The creative minds of the computer scientists decided they would apply it to other areas of their life. And now if you search on Google, there's a very vibrant community of people performing life hacking. And what this means is um, they're coming with productivity tips for their lives in general. How can I get more done in my day? How can I make my budget spread further? This type of thing. How can I make my marriage work better? Everything in their lives. And the various websites have some very creative people who are trying out different ingenious ideas to see what impact it has and whether it does improve their lives or not. A good example might be somebody who says, I waste eight hours a day sleeping. What a waste of time. So they'll decide, I'm going to instead just sleep 15 minutes every two hours. And they'll try it out for a few months. And then they'll say, I feel great. I'm so full of energy. Or maybe after a month, well, it worked at first, but now I'm just exhausted all the time. And so people monitor these life hacks. And the most famous life hacker is probably um, Tim Ferriss, who wrote the book, is it The Four Hour Work Week, I think. And he comes up with lots of ideas for how to make your life ma massively more productive. And this idea now, I've noticed, has moved over it into the language learning community and several people have um, proposed language hacks. It's certainly not anything they've invented. Um, it's an idea that many people have had independently. And perhaps uh, the most famous two language hackers are Katz, who has the website All Japanese All The Time, and he's come up with some very specific hacks, which are changes that he made to how he learned Japanese to become fluent in Japanese in a very quick time. And the, the main idea he had is um, to, well, as the title suggests, never hide from the language that you're learning. So he would listen for hours and hours and hours a day to Japanese, even when he was sleeping. Who knows if that works? And he would have thousands of sentences of Japanese in a um, spaced repetition system, Anki or something like it, and study these endlessly, endlessly, until he really felt that he had a feel for the language. And so he's got a website now. He sells some products, I believe, and he's got a lot of followers. Another fine example of this is Benny the Irish Polyglot. You, and he's got a great website, I highly recommend it. And he sells a book on language hacking. Just type language hacking into Google and you'll find his website and um, his book, which is full of many, many tips from Benny on how to improve your language learning productivity. Okay, now, What, though, are these productivity tips? We could say, in a way, that they're a method that we should copy because somebody better than us, more experienced than us, more clever than us, said these work and the other approaches don't work as well. But what's important to me, at least, is that you have, need to think of language hacks or any hacks as experiments. And they need to be testable to see whether they work or not. So if you decide I'm going to listen to whatever language you're learning in my sleep, 
because I haven't got any time during the daytime, I'm going to rely on listening in my sleep, you might be wasting your time. Because you, unless you test whether it's working, it's not got any value at all. And this is based on the scientific method. Richard Feynman, the great physicist, described the scientific method pretty much like this. You guess that something is correct, then you think of some experiments that will prove you're wrong. And if those experiments don't prove you're wrong, then your confidence that you're right, you are right increases. But if you're proven wrong, you reject the idea. But you must always accept that there always exists the chance that a new experiment will come, a new test will come along that proves you wrong. Okay? Now, the opposite of the scientific method is faith. And this is just doing something because you were told it was right. Faith, in fact, is defined often as belief without evidence. I believe it because I believe it. And if you believe that the best way to learn a language is to listen to it in your sleep, but you've got no evidence, well, good luck to you. Uh, because one definition of insanity, which I really like, is that it's doing the same thing continually, hoping for a different result, but never achieving it. So, please focus on thinking of ways to know whether your experiment, experiments have failed. We can all find evidence that they've succeeded. Oh, I tried this method and now I know a hundred more words than I did. Yes, but maybe if you tried something else or hadn't tried that method at all, you'd have known 200 words. Who knows? But try to work out tests that prove your method doesn't work. Okay? rather than just coming up with a few examples of where it does work. That's very easy to do. So let's look at, so I've applied several hacks in my own language learning and previous videos have touched on a few of them. And the ha hacks you apply need to change based on the current place you are in your language learning. For example, now I'm not particularly interested in Czech in hacks for improving my knowledge of the grammar because I think I know the grammar pretty well. I'm focusing more on a few different areas, and for these I come up with specific hacks that I believe are going to improve our productivity, and I'm trying to prove these hacks wrong, okay? So the first one is L-form verbs. This actually means verbs in the past tense. Now, instead of learning verbs in their infinitive form, instead of learning to read, to run, to eat, to talk, I'm only going to learn new verbs in the past tense. I ran, he talked, we read, it worked, that kind of thing. And the reason is, in real life, I don't very much use the infinitive form of a verb. It's just unnatural. It's the bookish way of learning. And in real conversations, I've noticed that I and many other people use the past tense quite frequently. Yesterday, I went to the pub. We sat there and we drank beer. We talked about such and such a thing. So, and that can give you then a, a realistic, natural hook in, as a starting point into the new verbs that, that I'm learning. This is just for me, of course. So then I can go and learn more, but it's my first step into the verb now is going to be the past tense. I've been trying this for a few weeks. Really, it's looking good so far, but I'm trying to prove it doesn't work. The next one is what I call Disney adjectives. An adjective, of course, is something that describes a, a quality or property of something an ugly man, a boring book, an intelligent professor, a tasty bottle of wine. Now, <clears throat> the problem is that they're not easy to remember, adjectives. You can't easily put an image in your mind like you can with nouns. It's easy to imagine a banana. It's easy to imagine a house. Just close your eyes and think of it. But to think of a word like intelligent or tasty, it's more abstract. So what I'm now doing is, I keep hearing people say, try and associate silly stories with things. The more ridiculous, the, uh, the better. I realize the greatest, um, most imaginative people in silly stories are Disney. So I'm trying to associate Disney, fragments of Disney stories and Disney characters with adjectives. For example, um, in Czech, the word for cruel is uh, 
so for women, the adjective is kuta. So I'm sorry. Uh, kuta means cruel. Now, immediately in my mind, I think of Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians, very cruel woman, and I go Kuta Cruella in my mind. It just pops into my mind. So now, whenever I think of the somebody being cruel, she pops into my mind and Kruta springs from it. So Disney adject adjectives, trying to prove that doesn't work. And next, L imaging. And this is um, where I listen to stories and instead of trying to understand them when I'm listening in Czech, I try to see them as a series of pictures. As though I, I've got a book of pictures I'm flicking through that's telling me the story. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've noticed that when I listen to things in English a lot, I don't actually have any sense of the meaning, but I get visual images in my mind of the story as, as it's proceeding. And I've only been doing this one for a couple of weeks, every day though, every day for a long time. And I've noticed it has a very, very interesting impact on my ability to remember a story once I've listened to it, because I can go back and see the images. So I'm trying to prove this doesn't work as well. And the final one that I'm going to talk about is intensity versus heroism. Now, I started this one, I don't know, like six months or even a year ago, where I would never work for more than 15 minutes at a time. I would work for 15 minutes, then take a 10 minutes break, 15 minutes, then take a 10 minutes break. And the reason is, I found that if I worked for longer than 15 minutes on something, I ended up having to pace myself so it wouldn't be with any intensity. I'd think, well, when I first started in language learning, right, I'll do two hours this evening of solid work, and it would be an heroic effort that was exhausting. I'd have to pace myself. I'd hate the whole thing. So instead, I, I broke that down into 15-minute chunks. I did a 15-minute chunk then a 10 minute break, then 15 minutes of something completely different, then a 10 minute break, then a 15 minute chunk of something different, then a 10 minute break over the evening. Well now, I've refined that even further. So now I do five minutes an hour of a given task. So five minutes listening. I can focus very intently on listening to something for five minutes with all my energy and enjoy it and feel invigorated at the end. If I did that for half an hour, I'd feel exhausted and have to lie down. But by having five minutes of intensity rather than heroism, heroism means doing it for a long time to me, but five minutes of intensity gets my brain tingling and actually leaves me even more energized at the end. And then, I, and then I can move on to a different exercise. For example, learning word lists in, my, in Anki for five minutes only. And again, it's an intense five minutes because I'm, my brain's tingling. Now, you may think, well, that's useless. I can't get into anything in five minutes. I need 15 minutes to ramp up. That's true if you go for mammoth sessions because you've, your brain's cooled down since the last mammoth, mammoth session. But if you repeat, if you do five minutes of the same thing, five more minutes listening just an hour later, your brain will still be tingling. There's no warming up required. You're on full cylinders already. You're going at full speed. So my mind is racing in language all the time now. Um, somebody posted actually on the How to Learn Any an Language Forum this idea of language as what they call the din in your head, this sort of chattering in the language with phrases popping up all the time. And I found in the past that when I did the two hour mammoth sessions, the language would fade away. But by doing these intense five minutes every hour, the language never leaves my brain. It's always there. It's always the din in my head with the sounds tingling. So this is one of the other hacks that I'm trying to disprove. And I haven't been successful in disproving this one so far. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for your time.